texture mapping in world versus UV mapping in Blender. If you are an experienced builder in OpenSim or Second Life, you have used the texture tab on the build dialog to adjust the position, scale, and rotation of textures on your build. In Blender, this is done as part of the UV mapping process. Here I'll show you how to do the OpenSim style mapping effects in Blender. But first, a quick lesson in UV map setup in Blender. The cube in Blender has a very different UV map. It is a single texture with a cross mapped on it that wraps around all six faces of a cube. I'm going to change this to something closer to the OpenSim default cube mapping. I'll look at the front of the cube in orthographic mode and use UV project from view bounded to map that face to the whole texture. In materials properties, I'll change the base color to an image. I'll open the same texture that I had there in world. And then I'll render that picture so I can see what my cube looks like as I make changes to the uh, texture map. I'll see the changes immediately. In the UV editing workspace, you have to select things in two places. In the 3D viewport, you select what parts of your model you want to edit. And then in the UV editor area, you select which parts of the map you want to edit. This gives you the ability to map, for example, each face separately without affecting the others and to edit only some UV points separately. For this simple example, I'm just going to select all in both cases. However, it's easy to click on your screen and lose your selection in either window or both at the same time. So you'll have to uh, look for those orange lines and remember to select everything again. Back in world, let's look at scaling and start with the horizontal scale. As you increase the horizontal scale in world, the texture squishes and eventually repeats over and over again. Entering integer numbers specifies exactly how many times it repeats. There's twice, there's three times, and so on. I'm going to set it back to twice for now. In Blender, to squish the texture, you stretch the UV map to get the same effect. Scale in X. So just like in World, the texture is squishing and it's uh, repeating over and over again. And just like in World, you can type numbers like two or three to repeat the texture however many times you want. Or you can pull the, uh, the cursor to get the fractional values in between. And I'm going to set it to two for this example. Note that Blender shows this as the UV map hanging off the edge of, of the texture map. You're supposed to imagine that the texture repeats over and over again, all over this UV editing area. And the parts of the map that hang out are grabbing pieces of those repeated textures. So it goes 0, 1, 2, 3, and then where it hangs over, it comes back in and gets 0, 1 again. Then when it hangs out on the other side, it gets 2, 3, and that's the end of the repeat for this case. This works the same for the vertical scale in World. In Blender, you scale in Y and stretch uh, the map vertically. You enter numbers like 2, and this causes the texture to repeat vertically. Note that in the, the Blender UV editor, X is left, right, Y is up, down. There is no Z. This is a two-dimensional uh, editing system for, uh, for UV maps. Entering scale factors that are less than 1.0 also has the same effect in-world as in Blender. For example, 
scaling by 0.5 or one half, zooms in on the center quadrant of the texture. And the same thing happens here in Blender if I scale in X and Y to 0.5. I'm zooming in on that center quadrant and it looks the same in world as in Blender. Changing that to 0.25, which is a quarter in X and a quarter in Y, zooms into this center octant, let's call it, that is the same size as one of the numbers on this texture map of mine. Let's start over and scale that to 0.25. And we get the same view with some defects caused by the way I, I did the mapping of the other faces of the cube that I didn't care about. To fix this, you have to learn how to use the horizontal offset and vertical offset in, uh, in World. But in Blender, you can just move the texture map until it looks right. Or it turns out that the number that you have to specify to do this using the G command or the transform move happens to be the same number. 0.125 in X and then G in Y, 0.125 in Y as well. Just like I entered those two numbers in World, I can enter the same numbers to get the same effect here in Blender. If you've done the math on this, the numbers end up being a function of which row or column that you want from your texture map. And sometimes that row or column numbers go negative. The scale factor, which is 0.25 this time, plus half of the scale factor, which is that 0.125 that I entered. In this simple case of a cube and a texture that covers a whole face, the numbers come out exactly the same in world as they are in Blender again. And watch this. In Blender, even the rotate tool has exactly the same effect as the rotate tool in world. I'm going to tell Blender to rotate by 40 degrees and the texture map rotates right uh, 40 degrees, which causes the character to rotate left 40 degrees. And then in world, if I enter a rotation of 40 here, the character rotates in exactly the same direction. Blender has many more things you can do with UV maps. Just playing around with the UV menu, I can italicize my numbers with shear. I can flip them around backwards with scale in X minus one. So that makes the letters back, backwards by selecting different parts of the uh, of the UV map and scaling those I can make my letters get fat on top or skinny on top or by selecting the bottom I can scale that down by scaling the UV map down, I'm stretching the texture out and making it fatter on the bottom or skinnier on the bottom. So there's a, there are many powerful things that uh, Blender has options for you to do, including <coughs> there's an incredibly powerful, powerful tool called baking. And that gives you the ability to combine all your textures together into one. But that's a very advanced topic, and I may never get around to doing that here.